Okay, so let's continue on with our journey into hypothesis testing uh, with some examples. So let's look at example number one here. We want to know whether the mean apartment rental rate in the population of all one-bedroom apartments exceeds $895. Uh, okay, so mean, right, means, okay, we're finding the mean. Is that mean exceeds? We think of the word gr greater than, okay? So step one, we want to know what's our HO and our HA. Now, exceeds, uh, that's, that's greater than. Anything suggest that it's greater than or equal to? No, no. So we just say mu, which is our population parameter, our Greek letter for mean, exceeds, means greater than 895. HO is just the opposite. So mu, our population parameter, the mean of concern here, less than or equal to 895. Okay, so it's important that we label the statements HO and HA. It's important that we also have a um, population parameter that we're measuring or testing. Step two, what's our alpha? Now, nothing in here... Do we have, okay, so so here, no alpha mentioned, so we pick a reasonable alpha. Uh, alphas are typically numbers between uh, 0 0.10 and uh, 0 0.01. So somewhere in between there, it's generally considered to be a reasonable alpha. Just for randomness, that's 0 0.02, okay? Again, you know, a lot of lot of thinking can go behind that uh, step two. What's what's an appropriate alpha, uh, and, and sort of balancing the issues of type one and type two error and so on. Uh, won't get too overwhelmed with that just now. Step three is our test statistic. Okay, now we we note that. Uh, we're given a population standard deviation, and that population standard deviation is 225. So we have a population standard deviation. So we're going to our test statistic is going to be around the Z statistic, and that Z is going to equal to population mean minus mu zero, okay, divided by sigma over the square root of n. Okay, <clears throat> so there's going to be our test statistic. Okay, now all that we've written out, and we really haven't taken a sample yet, right? We can do all that. We can, and 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 it's appropriate that we state our hypothesis and and pick an alpha before we even actually do the samples, just so that we're not massaging uh, the uh, the results, you know, massaging what we get to get a, a certain result, right? So we've done all this. We don't even have a lick of data. So now we run, we do some sampling, you know, we do that uh, good old grunt uh, stats work, and we get some results. Okay, so now we're able to use these results to calculate our, our test statistic. So that Z is uh, X bar, what is that? $915, 915, minus mu zero. Mu zero is just the particular value mentioned in the hypothesis, 895 divided by the population standard deviation of 225, which was given to us, divide by the square root of n. Looks like we have an n account of 180. Run through the math, and we get uh, a z score of 1.19257. Okay, so there's our step three. Now we're able to take that step three, leverage it into step four, okay? When we were doing probabilities, so just note, a p-value is nothing more than a probability. Heck, that's what the p stands for. Okay? It's nothing more than a probability. And it's a probability that you know, we get a, a value greater than something or other, right? Or less than something or other. Okay, so it's, it's probability. Now, from our previous experience, we note that the Z 
scores and it's just a transformation where we take any normally distributed problem and tr transform it into the standard normal okay. so with that when we start to look at uh, step four the calculation for the p-value it's all centered around the sign in HA so that is just essentially the probability that the z-value is greater than Right? Just because the sine in HA, right? That's the sine in HA is greater than the 1.19257 because it's just a transformation. That z-score statistic was just a transformation of that particular problem into, into something that uh, relates more to the standard normal. Okay. So now we do our, our probability calculation. And we do our probability calculation in the same way we were doing probability calculations uh, before. Right? Nothing, uh, nothing has changed. Oop, let's skip over that because that's where we're at. So, so we see 1.19, 1.19, 1 and 0.883. Now recall that that is less than. Right? So we have on our table the probability that Z is less than 1.19, and this, in this case, just 1.9. Right? And that equals 2.883. So if we want the probability that Z is greater than 1.19, we're going to go 1 minus the probability it's less than, and in that particular case, we get one, uh, 0 0.0117, okay? Now, we could easily have pulled over our, our, our Excel sheet right? and visited our good old friend, uh, Norm. Right, let's go down to Norm, Norm. Uh, and then we'll just go with uh, uh, Norm's dist, norm.s. Dist. Okay. Now that takes our stand, our normal. Uh, so it, you can see in the arguments it asks for a z and whether it's cumulative. So our z score is 1.19. And because we're using Excel, we can go with all of it. And then cumulative just means one. You never want, as we saw before, we don't really care about the situation where it's not. Okay, that gets me the less than, just like we had before. Okay, that's no different than what we look up in the tables. I still have to find the complement. A one minus that particular cell, and I get to the same spot. Okay. So oh, both, both pretty quick, right? Both pretty quick and, and relatively painless. Okay, so step five. We have that rule, right? Is P 0.117 less than alpha? No. P is greater than alpha. P is greater than alpha. Therefore, my little three dots, the risk of rejecting H naught is too high. Our probability committee to type 1 error would be 11.7%. We're only willing to commit a type 1 error 2% of the time. <laughs> Way too risky for us. We say, okay, thanks, but no thanks. Therefore, we do not reject HO with uh, alpha equal to 0 0.02. Okay. And then step 6. If we did not reject H naught, what do we conclude? Well, it, it, it depends. We don't want to say anything that suggests that we have accepted HO, so we just say we've, we've, not, re we've not accepted HA, crossed it out. So essentially we'll say whatever is in HA, not likely, okay? So therefore, in step six, we can conclude that the mean or average, whatever, right? Let's go with the average. We'll keep it simpler. Average rent does not exceed 800 
and $95, right? We've just said, essentially said, whatever's in HA, it ain't that, okay? Yes, I know it's almost the same as saying it's it's probably it's it's less than or equal to 895, but sometimes that runs afoul of the whole accept HO kind of thing, and yeah, we hate that. Okay, so not too bad. Wait, so that one's done. Let's go do another example in the next clip.